Nader, my final question for you is in terms of personal branding and content creation. I feel that those two are very much related and it's your online presence, your values, what you represent. So what can tips you have for job seekers that they don't know what their brand is or they don't know what content strategies they should use one day, two days, like, comment, what, tips, what can I do? And I'm, you're very active on LinkedIn and I follow you. So what tips do you have in terms of content creation and personal branding? Great question. So when it comes to a content creation strategy or just social engagement strategy, mm -hmm. uh, I give two steps, a simple two-step process to my clients. Uh, everybody can do this. Uh, you actually don't need to create content. So I would say content curation because you're just resharing someone else's or a publication's content. You don't really need to create any original content or write an article from scratch that is 100% yours. Uh, I encourage anyone who wants to do that, but I actually don't dictate it at all. I don't recommend it as the first thing to do. Just curate, find content, and then reshare it on LinkedIn. So, the, and these this content strategy is relevant to the STAR method. Yeah. So the, the, the first two is basically situation and task. So you want to create or, or curate or engage with content that has to do with situations you want to be in and the tasks you want to be responsible for. So situations you want to be in is this future focus. So we talk about how mission and purpose in the future is really important. So mm -hmm. you can basically go to Google and look for future trends in your industry. So let's say you're a mechanical engineer in the aerospace industry. Yes. So you can go and type in mm -hmm. aerospace industry future trends, you know, aerospace, mechanical systems, innovations, you know, upcoming, upcoming, you know, uh, changes, you know, look, look into the future. You're going to find hundreds and if not thousands of articles that talk about the future of your industry. Yes. The upcoming trends. That's really the first strategy. Find something and then reshare it because as your audience, when recruiters, hiring managers, other engineers, when they see that you're talking about the future, again, it positions you as someone who's future focused, yeah. someone who's a visionary, someone who's visualizing and thinking of and learning about educating himself or herself about uh, what's, uh, what's, what's upcoming, yeah. you know, is interested, enthusiastic about that. So that is one strat strategy number one. Now, on top of that, right after that, we know we have these upcoming changes or trends in order for those trends to be reality. So leave mm -hmm. trends and become reality and today on that path, on the path to achieving those trends, there are challenges involved. Mm -hmm. So the next piece of content you want to cre create, curate, or engage with are the challenges in the industry. So you can type in industry, aerospace industry, current challenges. It could even be upcoming challenges, but just be challenge focused, current problems, you know, mechanical engineering or mechanical system design challenges, mm -hmm. you know, 3D printing, aerospace or automotive, put your industry name in there as well, challenges, problems, mm -hmm. issues, obstacles. Those will be the keywords you can put into Google and pair it up with your industry or the field of work you have, type of work you do. And you'll find hundreds, thousands of articles that talk about issues that exist it could be you know resource you know related it could be logistics related it could be materials related it could be technology driven it could be workforce you know workforce challenges you'll find first of all you're educating yourself here you know so a lot of times uh, every time when i take a client through this i tell them this is interview practice mm -hmm. like the data that you're gathering is preparing you is making you knowledgeable for the conversations you will have in in job interviews because this allows you to be able to talk about your mission, your purpose, and your, your awareness of what's happening in the future, what problems and challenges, issues, and you know, obstacles is on your path or on the industry's path to achieving those problems. Yes. And this two strategies actually, I call them positioning. You know, this is actually positioning you as the problem solver, as yes. the solution provider, as the hero of the story. So you come in as the hero who is who's familiar with what the future looks like, what, what villains, what issues, what demons are on the path, what problems persist. And hey, third, I'm coming in as, as the person who's going to achieve those, you know, overcome those problems in those situations so we can get to the results and the outcome that we want. 
you know so it just positions you as as the as the person who comes in to save the day and what about the personal branding so we've talked about you know identifying your values or your values should be aligned with the company values so how can people identify their values values are quite personal so the way i talk about values or core values values are the rules you cannot and will not break on the path to achieving your mission or that company's mission or that industry's mission. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lot of ways you can solve a problem. There's always ethical ways and non-ethical ways. Yes. So one of my problem, one of my core values are to be ethical, you know, cause there's many different ways we can go about certain things. We're just not going to do all of that, you know? Yes. Second thing is communication, you know, how, how to consistently communicate, be honest and upfront. Mm -hmm. So again, it's, it's personal, you know, so yeah. a lot of times you have to just rephrase values in terms of rules you don't want to break. Yeah. So you can start to brainstorm. Secondly, to make it easy, just look at your top three favorite companies and look at their values. Mm -hmm. So the other day we were looking at, uh, forgot the company name, but put the company name, type in, you know, values, core values, business values. Yeah. And every company has a page on their website. Either, either it says about, the about us or company page. Yeah. Sometimes it says vision or mission or values. Yeah. They literally, every business would have a value statement or multiple yeah. sets of, you know, core values. Those are the rules that they cannot break on the path to providing services to their clients. So pick theirs you know you don't have to create from scratch just align yourself with the core values of a business you're really passionate about and i feel that if your value let's say is empathy and you need to always talk about empathy and how empathy is at workplace or empathy as you mentioned in the engineering world so that your content and your personal brand is aligned and they will know your authentic self when recruiters check your linkedin page right 100 percent percent core values really come in there are um, they're evaluated rather than accepted so if you come to me and say you know these are my core values again, like i said in one of the previous videos like i'm just not going to believe you mm -hmm. you know like just show most me. recruiters like recruiters show me prove it yeah. recruiters yeah. are trained not to just believe you because yeah everybody just comes to an interview and when i say everybody take it with a grain of salt but nine out of ten people they exaggerate they embellish they self-promote they outright lie white lie or yeah. not doesn't really matter but they only talk about the positive stuff mm -hmm. you know if small fraction of people actually talk about the you know non so positive yeah. Those are people who are courageous, they're brave, they're willing to, you know, show their true colors. And we want people to talk about their core values through stories. You know, yes. how did you acquire that core value? Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, if you want to design a better, better aerospace airplane landing system, well, one of the ways to do it is to just hack the competitor's company and just steal their designs. That's just hire a hacker on dark web. You know, it's like... I did it, but hey, you broke a core value. Yes. We don't steal data. We don't steal information. Yeah. You know, we can design it, but if you get as a manager, if you keep the designer in the office and lock him up and chain him up to the desk and be like, work until, you know, mm. well, this is not a communist country, you know? So like <laughs> you get the design done faster, but you just broke a core value, you know? So, you know, work-life balance is a great value. Communication, if you're yelling at people to do work harder, Sure, you know, force actually works. If you yell at people and point a gun at them, it works. But your style of communication is no longer aligned with our company's core yeah. value, you know? Yeah. Those are maybe obvious, funny examples, but that's literally how companies set up the rules. Rules you cannot break on the path to success. Those are great tips, Aneta. I really appreciate that. And with that, my interview with you comes to an end. I really enjoyed the conversation and I learned a few new things, which I will apply when I'm giving tips to my clients. Thank you for that. And for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of personal branding or content creation, please leave comments below and tune in next time for other great guests I'm preparing for you guys. And again, Nader, thank you very much. And let's keep the conversation going. Bye, everyone. Sure. Thank you.